Hey, it's Rabbit here. So this video we're going to touch on vectors and bearings. So this video is kind of an introduction into flight simulators. So maybe you've never played one before, but you like Top Gun or you just like flying around and you want to get into the heavy duty stuff. You want to have to deal with physics and air pressure and all that kind of fancy stuff. So maybe you've played Ace Combat and you want to step it up a notch or maybe you just really want to jump in the deep end and give it a go. So these are a couple of things that you're going to need to know before you get started. So vectors have to do with the... Well, actually vectors is a term that gets thrown around a bit. So depending on the context of which you hear it, it depends on what we're talking about. Vectors can mean like flight paths or directions. Uh, navigation terms and we'll worry about that in a moment what we'll talk about now is the vectors of an aircraft so the word vector in this instance is just a fancy word for forces so you've got four forces on an aircraft you've got lift drag weight and thrust now looking at this you think well that's really simple I don't really I can just look at that and now I know well there's a bit more to it when your aircraft changes direction or changes its angle, the lift vectors change as well. Well, not just the lift vector, all vectors, sorry. So when you're upside down, weight vector and the lift vector are pointing in the same direction. So you've got double the force pushing you into the ground. And a little bit of a side effect to that is the drag vector will try and right the nose. So the drag vector kind of works like when you're throwing a dart, if you throw a dart sideways or back to front, it will try and right itself so that the wings are at the back and the heavy is at the front. That's kind of the same as an aeroplane, it's like a dart flying through the air. Or say for instance if you want to do a vertical maneuver, this is the best way to demonstrate how vectors affect your energy. So if you've got a level plane flowing straight and level, you have maximum potential energy, which is what your aircraft can do. So you've got maximum maneuverability. But if your aircraft is pointing straight up vertically, your thrust vector is fighting against weight and drag, and your lift vector is not helping much at all. And that's why planes stall. And as you can see, going straight up in the air affects your energy. It kind of minimizes it because you're fighting all these forces like gravity and drag but all you're using to fight against it is just the thrust vector. So that's what they talk about by energy. Now you can store energy in the bank and use it when you need it or you can run out of it and pretty much fall out of the sky. And that's what happens when planes stall. So when it comes to the other vectors, the flight path and directions, what we've done is we use compass points instead of north, south, east and west or the clock face numbers which you might hear people call out 9 o'clock or 6 o'clock or whatever. They're all well and good for quick and easy calls but they lose detail over longer distances. They don't have their accuracy uh, once they get past a certain point. So in order to get around that we use compass. Uh, points. So we've got 0 is north, 90 is east, 180 is south, 270 is west, uh, and all the numbers in between. So this works great when you're referencing where you've come from, where you're going, when you need to change your heading. Um, it makes navigation a lot easier instead of north, northeast, or it loses accuracy over distance. The only problem that we've got with this is if I call out that I've got a bogey at 180, my 180 is not the same 180 as someone else who's flying 100 miles to the left of me or to the right of me or ahead of me facing a different direction. There's no point of reference that everyone understands. So what we do is we get these compass points and instead of having the aircraft at the center of it, we pick a place on the earth and we put the bullseye there. So when we make references, now we can all understand where the location is because we've got one point of reference. Now, when you hear radio calls as well, you'll need to be aware whether they're referencing your point of reference or the bullseye. That can be a bit tricky, but you've got to keep your ears open. So if I was to say, from bullseye, 247 for 90, 3000 flanking. So 
we know where that is from bullseye and anyone else can work that out but if i didn't say bullseye and i said 247 for 90 at 3000 flanking you'd think that they're a little bit behind you and a little bit to the left see how it changes the location one could be millions of miles away and the other one is in relation to your aircraft fairly simple stuff so to get used to this I heard someone uses the trick of a whiteboard next to them with the compass points marked out uh, similar to what you see on screen now and what they do is when someone makes a bra call they mark out the point on the bullseye and they mark out their location on the bullseye and they get kind of an idea a bird's eye view of what's going on and they know where they are in relation to the point of interest that's been called out. Now I said bra call. Bra call is bearing, range, altitude and attitude. Sometimes you might get a little extra information as well whether they're flanking or hot or cold and they're heading where they're going and that can give you an intercept course so you can figure out where to cut them off and sometimes it comes in handy whether to bug out or bounce you can make that decision that's either attack or to run away so you can base decisions off these calls and that's what they're there for so I hope this short video is opened your eyes a little bit to some of the information that you might need to learn hopefully I've taught you some stuff that's going to give you an edge in the air uh, if you like the content like the video uh, and if you want to see more of this please subscribe uh, other than that if there's any questions you have there's plenty of YouTube videos out there plenty of YouTube tutorials uh, there's tons of flight nerds just like me out there willing to help and give information um, so feel free to join in the community and uh, have fun thanks for watching